Hi there. So today I am going to continue with the dividers. I'm doing the fox one today. I have just sewn around the image, um, just so that that wasn't on camera because it's noisy. That's all I've done is just sewn it on. Now what I did the other day, I did some of the daisies. And these are the, on the floor. they're the finished ones that I did. Um, and these are going to go somewhere on it, not sure where. Um, so they're all they're sparkly. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. There. It's just about picking it up. Um, so they match the little daisies that are on the fox's head. Um, and then there's these ivy leaves. Now I'd only got these leaves that I got from the works. And I put them on and my daughter came and had a look. I was sort of do a layout and I asked her what her opinion was. And she said, it's a pity you haven't got any leaves like the ivies. So she said, can't you change those? So what I did was I cut them out. I'll show you how I did them. Cut them into the ivy shape there and coloured them. And she was right. They look absolutely super. So Sky, thank you for that idea. That is just bang on. Um, and this is why I asked for her opinion on some of my work. So what I did was I held it by the point there and I just cut down and round to get a rough ivy leaf shape. So I cut round there and up into the point and then down this one, rounded it off. And then I just cut a little V into it there. Yeah, and that's the ivy leaf shape. So I've done a few of them already. So I just need to paint those. And all I did my little tray. It's a Ferro Rocher lid. They're well useful for these things. I've got here, so it's got a bit of a shimmer to it. I used the crystal green metallic um, acrylic paint. And then these again from the works, are, they're super cheap. Sap green and a bit of white. So I'm just going to pop him out of the way because I don't want to get any paint on there. So I just put a blob of that in there. Blob of green and a blob of white. <clears throat> and then literally I just went over First of all, with the metallic green and just covered it. And I did it quite thin because if you do it quite thin, you can still see the veins through it that are on the fabric leaves. I've got a rough idea what I'm doing with this one, but it's not set in stone, so... We'll see how it turns out. I didn't do both sides. Oh, blue paper. I didn't do both sides. I just did one side. So I'll do, and I do this on my glass work surface because it does wipe off if I do it straight away. No, that was uh, a really, really good idea of my daughter Sky's. And they've turned out really well so it just goes to show you, you can use what you have and just alter it slightly and you get something totally different I mean, it's gone from that to that you've got two different leaves from the same item which is brilliant Just 
do maybe two more. I'd rather have too many than not enough when I'm starting to put it together. This only needs to be a really thin coat. You don't need to apply it thickly. You can see some of the colour underneath and that's absolutely fine. Let's do one more. Okay, so that's the metallic green on there, and then all I did was use some of this sap green and just flicked my brush over it. So you can still see some of the metallic green underneath. So it just blends the colours a bit better. Just flicks all the way down the leaves. And it just makes it look nice, it's not a block colour then, gives it some interest. And then when I was looking at the leaves that are on the actual image, they've got little flecks of white lines running through them, which I believe do. Uh, so that's why I used the white then, just to highlight little areas. Okay. And I used the same brush, but what I will do, I will just grab a little bit of tissue. Just wipe my finger off a bit. Just going to wipe my brush a little. And then I'm just going to go over now with a little... of white and it will mix with the green so it just put some little highlights in it and if it's too white just go over it again because you've got the mix of the green on your brush Again, just okay, I can hear the oil man. I'm having oil delivered today for our heating, and I'm sure I've just heard him come through the gate. <laughs> And these are the I believe so I will just I'll give them a quick dry with my heat gun. They don't take long to dry at all. A bit too much on that one, so I'm just gonna go over that with a bit of green and blend that down. Oh, 
sticking to me now. And then also I thought what I would do is, because they're all, they're on like a vine, I've got some natural uh, string, some hessian type string. I'll colour that slightly and then I can use that as a vine on the edges of this page. Pleased with those. Okay, so I was going to give that a white wipe. So this is a string. So I thought if I use a couple of a couple of pieces of this, maybe just you could do use um, distressed ink as well for this. Um, but I just thought I'd use a bit of acrylic paint. And I've got the dropsies on me today. Again, put that in my tray, just a little squirt. And I'm just going to get another brush. And this time I'm going to use a piece of tissue. And I don't want to totally block the colour, I just want a little bit of a little bit of colour on it here and there. We want some of the natural colour coming through still. Turn that over. It just stops it from being one solid colour <laughs> once it's down on the page. Okay, so that's that bit. There. I'll just do it again. Same again with this piece. Use a bigger brush there. Twice as quick.
So that's our twine with a little bit of colour on it now. There, let's put that to one side. Okay, the leaves are starting to dry already. So, I need to put that out of the way because that's going to end up going on everything. There we go. Okay, so I'm thinking on this one, I'm going to put the twine around the edges and then dot the leaves onto it. Maybe do something in this corner with the little daisies um, and also there's some little if you can actually see them down here there's a little pinky purple flower and a blue flower and a little yellow one um, and the blue butterfly I did finish the butterfly with the black so there you go with the black center on it which is sparkly um, so and I found these and I'm not sure I might just entwine these with the ivy dotted here and there and then put a little crystal or something in the middle. I've got some pinks there and purples. I think they look quite pretty. Um, I am going to just buff the background with gold just to keep the um, that theme going and it just gives it a nice backing. So literally just rub my finger loosely along the edge just to give it a little bit of shimmer. Rather than it being solid black. And then anywhere that we don't get the vine, it's got a little bit of interest on it. So that's just giving it a bit of a shimmer there. Okay, so I think with this, going to what glue shall I use I don't want to use fabric tech on this because it'll show I think if I use um, gel medium that's going to be the best one to perhaps use for this process I don't want to get too much glue on it but at the same time I want them to be able to when this dries it dries matte and it dries clear so I can be quite liberal with the glue The only problem I'm going to have is it's going to stick to my fingers and not the paper, as is always. You start this process and you're thinking, oh, why have I done this? It looks so messy. It looks awful. 
I can see glue everywhere. This is not going to work. But once it's down and all in place and starts behaving, they actually turn out all right. Okay. So I think if I twist these a bit, turns. Oh, yet another thing that seems like a good idea at the time. See, this was the last minute idea doing this, the string. I hadn't planned on doing this, but I just thought when I was looking at the image this morning, that could look quite nice if I made it into a proper vine rather than just the leaves. It seems to stick down better when the string's a bit wetter. Maybe. Generous with the glue. my finger Okay, we're down. <laughs> okay, that's stuck down now. Once this actually sets, it's set so hard, it's absolutely super. Okay, so that's it looks a right mess at the moment as you can see there's glue everywhere but this isn't a problem so now I'm going to dot the leaves on the vine all around I'm not going to go too mad on this inside edge because that's where the holes are being punched. Um, so I don't want those interfering down there. However, I do want... There, I think that looks quite nice where they're laid. 
Okay, so I'm going to. I th am I going to use 3D? Yeah, I think I will. I'm going to use 3D gel on the back of the leaves. So I'm going to put a good. It's still a bit damp. A good blob on the back of each one. Just press them in place where I want them to be. I don't mind parts of it sticking up, that's absolutely fine. Um, but you put plenty on so that it does make contact with somewhere on your on your page. As it starts to go off, you can just go over and press down again if it's starting to lift slightly. Well, I'll just add, I've got plenty of glue on it. down there I think just underneath it's not stuck down It's going to have to be pushed down a bit. There you go. Okay. So then I've got the daisies that I made. And I think I'm just going to use the three of them and cluster them in the top corner. And they just pick up on the daisies on Foxy's head. So I'm just going to oh, pop those down now. Again, I'm going to use the 3D gel medium. Although it doesn't feel very secure when it's first on, it sets beautifully hard this does and I know that everything will be stuck down and not going to pop off once it's all set.
I think in the centre of these little purple flowers So what should I put in there? Let's hold that up so you can see. Okay, uh, they need... I do have some little crystals. Let's have a look. Um, let's see. some little I don't have any round ones but I have got some little teardrop shaped ones yeah I'm going to pop those in the centre so I'm going to use um, that bit of stick these on I think And they've also got some of the pink colouring in them. It might be easier to put the glue actually on the flower, I think. Because I'm so sticky now. just picked up a little bit of glue if I can get that off it's got green on it off my finger there let's got that off <clears throat> okay so I've just hold that up again so there's the top, uh, there's the little sparkles in the flowers. So the other thing I am going to do again is, <coughs> excuse me, all the little white dots, like on all the other images, I've just highlighted them with the sparkly nail varnish. Just so they've got little shimmery dots. all of the images oh, this is so empty now It never looks very good when they're wet, but once they've dried and that, they, the sparkle shows up a bit more and I just think they look so sweet. I think I've got them all. <clears throat> I'm going to let that go off and dry totally. And then when it has dried totally, I'm just going to touch up with the paintbrush perhaps on the vine a little bit along here maybe just 
go over a little bit more with the gold along the edges but I'm going to wait for it to dry because it's quite wet now with the glue but that is our finished piece on that one I'm quite pleased with that that's that's sweet and then in the next video I will do the other side uh, which is going to be an owl image that I've printed off which is this one and I'm going to pull some of the blues from that one and work with the blues on that okay I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you again soon bye